So I think one of the main things that I recommend is just to be careful about um, your sources of information, make sure that you are implementing things that are research-based, evidence-based. Another thing to keep in mind is that syllable rules are not always the gold standard. In fact, they might be confusing for students who are already struggling and who have a lot that they're trying to keep in mind when they're reading. So if for some students, uh, morphological awareness, looking for the smallest meaningful part in a word, and structural analysis, chunking the word into um, orthographic pieces might be a better approach. Uh, again, it really does depend on your student. Um, and by using database decision making, you can determine whether your approach is effective. So I think there's often a misconception that foundational reading instruction and skills, the knowledge of grapheme phoneme correspondences and decoding skills translate automatically into multisyllabic word reading. Um, and certainly it, those foundational skills are necessary to engage in multisyllabic word reading, but students really need to be taught and students who struggle especially need to be taught explicitly um, how those decoding skills um, scale up. So they've been effective for them before. Now, how do you use those to move from identifying and pronouncing individual letter sounds to identifying and pronouncing word parts to read more complex words? Um, so I think that's an important thing to remember that students do need this continued instruction as the words they're being exposed to become more complex and don't always follow the, the rules that they've been practicing um, in previous instruction that they've received been receiving. There's also then a careful balance that that we have to find with ongoing foundational skills instruction for some students um, and continuing to review vowel patterns, practice flexing vowel sounds. Um, so making sure we're moving into more complex strategies and supporting students in decoding multisyllabic words, but then supporting them and continue to practice those um, graphene phoneme correspondences so that they can apply them fluently and automatically every time they're reading a word. And I think another um, misconception or something to think about is reading connected text. So one, just the importance of always reading connected text in reading instruction, of always moving from isolated word reading to connected text, even if you only have time for some sentences to read at the end of a lesson. Um, but I think as you move into multisyllabic word reading, really shifting the way you're thinking about text. So as students are learning foundational skills, as they're learning graphene phoneme correspondences for the first time, you want to choose a lot more controlled text. A lot of people use decodable text um, so that students are really practicing the sounds and things that they've been learning and in instruction in the text they're seeing. And as students move into reading multisyllabic words, they're there really isn't decodable text in the same way. So you're not gonna have text that only includes certain affixes that they get taught. Um, you can certainly control a text and include more affixes that they've been taught or more multi-slavic words for them to practice. Um, but text is a little bit different. So you want the text to become more complex as students are getting more complex reading instruction as well. And I think those would be my main ideas or misconceptions.